Good evening, everyone. I'm Juliette Patterick, and today we are exploring the communion of food and faith. The foods we eat and the ways in which we prepare them are among the strongest and most enduring expressions of our culture. They bind child to mother, mother to family, and families to the traditions that define nations. Please take a minute to think about how food is used in many situations of grieving. Food often acts as a mediator of comfort, as evidence in funeral foods and foods that are brought to families when people are ill. It tends to hold much more meaning than one would imagine. It's replete with family narratives and recipes that concoct a savory stew from social and cultural ingredients. For many people, it's clear that food serves as an invaluable portal to the past, as demonstrated by funeral food and sitting shiva. I allude to the works of Elizabeth Ehrlich, who is most known for her memoir, Miriam's Kitchen. She writes, I don't remember the funeral, but I was there. I can easily relate to Ehrlich's recollection, as, as I unfortunately lost my mother when I was six years old. We, what we remember most is the period of time that followed the funeral, where Elizabeth's family and my family were surrounded by extended family and friends who bought many gifts of food and drink. People feel strongly that mourning families should not have to worry about preparing food, as mourners' sole purpose should be on mourning their past loved one. Although people come and go, the initial loss in reality is strikingly apparent. The reality of your close one, gone from the earth, is hard to fully grasp, but time eases most of the lingering pain, as individuals help mourners express, rather than repress, their grief through bereavement back to normal living. And remember, this behavior also transcends to those families who have a sick family member as well. Since I was very young when my mother passed away, I have decided to bring my grandmother, Angela Dazzo, on today's show to help me remember. Hi, Grandma. How are you? Welcome to the show. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm just very pleased that you're home and sharing your day with me. I'm excited I got to come back for this little weekend, too and to share Easter with you as well. Anyway, um, unfortunately, I'm going to bring us back to a darker time. Um, in the one week span that Mommy was in the hospital and uh, the time shortly thereafter, what do, you recall, what do you recall about the responses of our family and friends um, at such a difficult time? Being we had such a close-knit family, both the Adazos and Patericks and Buffalanos, it was a time that was so dark but yet made a little easier with such dear family and of course so many friends and neighbors because my daughter Juliet's mother was such a giving sensitive individual so many people knew her and so in response to this which was so quick and sudden they didn't know what to do for us first and especially that Juliet who was six Jimmy was three. That, that whole picture, I'm sure, in my mind, as well as theirs, they didn't know what to do, whether it was emotional support, whether it was phoning me, whether it was bringing food. Many of the neighbors really used to leave food on the doorsteps. The town responded as well because Stephanie knew every single business person. They just loved and adored her. So they also reached out to us. And I think I overheard Juliet speaking before, food and customs and tradition go hand in hand. I think the dining room, sitting down together, whether it is tears of joy, tears of sorrow, just having discussions, that was the uniting place. So with family, with friends and neighbors, and with food, that was also the uniting place on South Drive for our family at such a time that we didn't know what was up and what was down. And all I can say is, if I didn't have all these wonderful people and whatever they did for us, I don't know where I would have gotten the strength to put one foot in front of the other, literally, to take care of Juliet and Jimmy and to know that my daughter was not going to return home to us. 
It was very difficult, but we had such wonderful, wonderful family. And they stayed around the clock. If it wasn't my son, my son-in-law, my daughter-in-laws, Jim's family, one of his brother-in-laws used to sleep with Stephanie through the night. She was never left alone. Make me, Julia. Oh, you mean in, in the, the hospital? hospital. Okay, in the hospital. I don't even know. So uh, Uncle Ralph, Aunt Clemmie's husband, stayed there around the clock so that Jim and, and my son Mark would come home and be able to get a little time to themselves to refresh before they went back again. And my husband and I and just so many people. I mean, the hospital was packed, packed with family, packed with friends. It was, it was a testament to who my daughter was and what she left, was leaving, was leaving behind. It was an amazing thing to see, uh, you know, very painful, traumatic, but it was a joy to see that she touched so many lives and they didn't know what to do for us to help soothe us. And I will be forever grateful. Grandma, thank you for that wonderful response. And uh, I'll let it be known that in the background of the audience right now, my grandpa just walked by and made a comment that my grandma's voice was not as strong as usual. Grandma is one of the strongest people. If No, you are the strongest person I know. Um, and my grandpa was like, why are you talking so quietly? And although you are as strong as you are, to go back to this, this point in, in your life is probably one of the most difficult Thanks. things that you could do. And for Poppy to even say something is silly, but obviously maybe he didn't know how far back you were going. Mm -hmm. um, so thank you for your comment. And I am I forget, because I was so young, um, how the community truly came together. Obviously, now I rely on you to provide me with the memory and the background of everything. And how at her funeral, literally, people Thousands. were standing because there wasn't room. Um, but... Although it was definitely the darkest time of my life, fortunately, being surrounded by family and friends and having you at the house 24-7 for the next three, four years, you made it one of the happiest times of my life. Um, every day was planned and packed with activities and um, what we were doing, where we were going every weekend, whether it was visiting our other family in Staten Island or going to Brooklyn. Um, we always, you made, you made, the, the worst of times, the best of times, um, brought us together. Poppy was cooking, sharing recipes, making sure nothing went undone and that nothing was forgotten about. You want to share, um, what mommy, you know, what mommy had planned, not planned for us, but like my dad said, when this happened, who, who would be better to raise, help, help me raise these kids than Stephanie's mother herself. And, uh, it's true. It's, true. it's truly incredible. And I thank you. So thank you for sharing that. Um, and let's move on. So I know you briefly mentioned before how a lot of people in the neighborhood had cooked dozens and dozens of meals and would leave them even on our front doorstep, um, knock on the door, ask us what they could do. Um, do you think there's some religious background to that? How, how does faith intertwine with these food traditions and behaviors that you previously described, um, especially in our community? here? Well, I think um, Plan Dome happens to be a close-knit community. And uh, I think each person, the moms all relied on each other to take care of the kids, whether it was at the bus stop, getting them to a sports event, or just going to the carnival or a fair. So everybody did it. It was almost like a family unit that did things together. And I know just before Stephanie passed away, it was 9-11, and my daughter went out into that community, whether it was a candlelight vigil, whether it was to bring food, whether it was to stay with a person who they were searching for their father and husband. Stephanie was the type of person that nothing was too great for her to accomplish or do for someone else. And I think these people in remembering her, rose to the occasion. And that is something that I think really where grace really envelops the whole picture. I think it's something that my husband and I had in our family. I taught my children to give 
and to do and not re re uh, expect anything in return. And so my daughter was always, and my son, always out there doing for, whether it was neighbors, a friend, strangers. Stephanie would pick up strangers and she would give them food or bring them to look for an apartment. It wasn't even a person she had to know well. So I think all this giving back that love, that grace, which is within this community, was brought back to the house at South Drive and really gave us that momentum to wake up the next day, to face it and make it best for Juliet and Jimmy. I think that was our main concern. I would say we celebrate my daughter, but we celebrate life. I never wanted the children to be victims. I wanted them to be victors. And all I can say is that seeing them today, through gr grace of God and blessings, that they are really something to be proud of. My daughter must be looking down upon them and saying, Mom, I'm so happy you and Dad were there to be with them because they are amazing, awesome young people. And this is not done alone. This is done through faith. And that's why I say that dining room table is a place where faith happens. That's why food, I think, is so important in an Italian family. Because when you sat at the table, it wasn't only about the food that was brought. It was about the conversation being held. There was no judgment. You could say anything we wanted. I was so lucky and fortunate. No one ever said that's something we shouldn't discuss. And I think I did that for my children as well. So with their hearts, with their soul, they gave and did. And I see Juliet is the same and I have Jimmy. They are living what my daughter would have wanted. And that's all part of family and faith and tradition intertwined.